Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I just wanted to give you some updates here. Let me see what's going on here. You don't need to see all that. <laughs> um, all right, so first update is I was able to withdraw uh, some of my money earlier than I thought from Robinhood. Uh, I was able to withdraw $2,376.71, and I've already received that in my bank, so that's good. Um, I have another withdrawal that I was able to take out for $980, which I'm still waiting on. And I currently have $200 uh, stuck in Robinhood currently for money laundering, hold, or whatever it is. Um, but that should be able to be withdrawn shortly, uh, probably towards the end of this week. Um, but I'm excited because I got some of my money back there. No problems at all. Just if anybody's curious about withdrawing money from Robinhood and stuff, um, pretty simple. Uh, anyways, um, to back to my portfolio and my M1 uh, update here. So yeah, it it's going good. I'm just a little confused. So I mentioned previously that I there was a discrepancy between uh, my total cost on my holdings page and this net cash flow, and I'm not sure why that is. I wrote um, I wrote support and this is my deal what i wrote basically i told my founder the discrepancy the difference between the, the net cash flow and the whole deal whatnot and there was a four cent discrepancy right and i was wondering why they're different um so i was just asking you know what am i missing here uh and they wrote back not the best Basically, their only response was dividends received will be a negative when it comes to net cash flow, which will increase your gains and no signature or anything. Now, I did put in another ticket asking uh, about how to track uh, earned dividends that aren't paid yet, and they said that's not a feature yet. Although, it actually kind of is on the app on the phone, I found, um, and I'll go over that in a minute. But at least that guy signed it. His name is Mike. And uh, he was much more friendly than this one who just put a very blunt statement and called it good. Um, so I responded <laughs> and said, this doesn't really answer my question. My dividends earned was $0.10. Cents. I have not received any dividends at all yet. My original question had discrepancy difference of $0.04, cents, which does not correlate to the $0.10 cents earned. Therefore, this does not explain my discrepancy at all. Uh, also, today, under my holdings page, it shows a total cost of 1139.98. I have deposited 1140 total. I only have one cent cash in my account. And so if you take the cost of holdings, which is why I paid for my, my positions, plus the penny in, of cash in my account, that's 1139.99. I deposited 1140, so where's the penny? Um... Also, the difference today between the cost of holdings and the net cash flow on the portfolio page is $0.12. Cents. Uh, and actually, it's 11 But anyway, I don't understand how it's calculated. I said an easy way to clarify this for me would be to let me know what net cash flow, which is found under value on the portfolio page, represents. It obviously represents something different than my total cost on the holding page. What's the difference between net cash flow and total cost? I understand this is my new amount of money, but I need to know my money is being accounted for properly if I'm to invest larger sums in the future. Can you help explain it to me, please? So we'll see how they respond to that. Um, in the meantime, I did, I've did. i been trying to research it, find the answer for myself, which I'm not having a lot of luck, but I came to this. How does M1 calculate return? And it's a money-weighted return calculation. It goes through all this stuff. Anyway, long story short, what I did, and I, and it makes kind of sense to me, and what I think is really happening. So if I go in my activity here, I have this is how, this is my activity. This these are the buys and and stuff, right? I mean, I've deposited uh, ten dollars a day, so I deposited ten dollars on this day, and I had forty seven cents in my account. They spent ten dollars and forty six cents in buys. All right, so this is my buys. So this would represent my actual cash flow. Now, if I take that 500 plus 10 
plus 993 plus 60 plus 1046, I get 1139.99. So that tells me that I have purchased $1139.99 in positions, not $1139.98 in positions. They're saying my total cost is a penny less than what it actually was right there. Why? I don't know. So here's my theory on this. The theory is that since I'm buying all these are, are partial shares and everything, uh, I'm thinking there's actually more after the decimal. <laughs> like my cost isn't really 1139.98. It's really 1139.98. Four, three, whatever. Like it's part of a penny, is what I'm thinking. Since this really adds up to eleven thirty nine ninety nine, which would explain me having one penny in cash. <laughs> but if you take the cost of eleven thirty nine ninety nine, go to my portfolio, subtract the net cash flow it claims, which is eleven thirty nine eighty seven. I don't understand. There's a 12 cent difference. 11 cents difference from my total cost here, but actual total cost from the activities page, there's a 12 cent difference here. All right. And his explanation of dividends has nothing to do with it since I haven't actually received any dividends. I've earned $0.10, 10 cents in dividends. So if you guys understand this better than I do, please let me know. Let, tr try to explain it to me. But my only theory at this point is that there's partial pennies out there that just aren't being displayed in these, whole, in these values. Um, so, but that still doesn't really tell me about until it still doesn't make up for this net cash flow. So this net cash flow should be the, the actual cash flow that flowed in flowed in and out of the holdings and stuff, like purchases, which is on this activity tab. So this total here should be the same as this net cash flow, which means it should be 1139.99. I don't understand. There's 12 cents difference there I'm missing saying it's not, and I don't know why. So anyways, if anybody out there knows why these values are, are off, um, let me know. I mean, somebody that's been doing this longer than me, uh, I would highly appreciate it uh, because their customer service is not helping a whole lot. Um, maybe when I get a day off, which I only have one a week right now um, because I'm doing some overtime, then maybe I'll give them a phone call and see if the person on the other line can actually explain it to me. I don't have a lot of high hopes at this point, though. Um, so, yeah, any help would be appreciated. Um, on to the next thing. I haven't changed any of my portfolio. <laughs> I told you I had the 100 stocks in my portfolio, and I still have 100 stocks, 1% weighted each, even though my weights are off right now because during that time I was modifying it, um, and my deposits haven't accounted for making it balanced yet. Um but I haven't touched the portfolio. I've thought about it. There's there's a couple stocks I want, and and there's some uh, there's one at least one in here that I'm really questioning whether I should have in here. But that's okay. That's okay. I made this decision originally. I picked these stocks for a reason. I'm gonna stick with them for now. Um, as you can see, today was not a good day in the market um, overall. I believe on S and P. Let's go to Yahoo. S&P is down 10.3 points, uh, 0.35%. Uh, Dow's down. NASDAQ was the only one up a little bit. Anyways, long story short here, um, <laughs> I went from being in the positive to being in the negative because um, yesterday was a good day and I was up. Um, even after my deposit, I was up. So as, you, as I said, I have you got a total amount deposited of $1,140. And uh, 
my value, let's let me figure this out. Minus 11, 31, 21, 879 is my actual loss at this point <coughs> in value. Um, of course, you don't realize that unless you sell, which I'm not planning on doing right now. Um, and this shows 1166 or 866. And there's a 13 cent difference. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't. I, maybe I'm calculating this stuff wrong. Maybe I'm a moron. Help me out, guys. <laughs> but yeah. So I don't understand this market gain. So it's being calculated. I mean, this this figure here is like kanji to me. It means nothing. Um, and this is probably why I don't understand. <laughs> Current value, value at beginning, blah, blah, blah. This is why I don't understand, which is fine. Whatever. Um, I can figure it out myself, what I've actually gained and lost, obviously, from my deposits. So, but uh, it's just interesting to me how they've done this. So, anyway, uh, long story short, not a good day in the market. I've lost some money there in value. No big deal. I have 10 cents coming to me at some point. I was able to uh, find in the app itself, if you uh, go in your portfolio and then you click the stock and then you swipe to the right, it actually shows your dividends earned for that particular stock. So I can't do that for the overall portfolio to see which ones they did. I have to go through each individual stock to find out which ones I've earned dividends on. And also, I'm assuming that that'll probably just keep accumulating and it won't reset before the next dividend. So that's not going to be that helpful in the future. So my problem of tracking my dividends is still a problem. Um, yeah. But I did find the three stocks that, uh, that, that paid me dividends or are going to pay me dividends at 10 cents. Um, one of them was uh, Chubb, uh, Chubb Limited, or I think that's what it's called. Oop. Yep, Chubb Limited. And as you see, nowhere in here does it tell me anything about dividends. Um, maybe here. Oh, look at that. Earn dividends. So I can do that. I can come in here and click under gain, and it'll show me how many dividends I've earned from Chubb. And again, I think that this will just keep accumulating. Like if I kept this for a year. I think it just gave me a whole year's worth of dividends showing there. It's, it, it's not going to reset. So I may have to keep track of them that way or something else. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, here's Federal FRT, Federal Realty Investment Trust. Uh, that's where four more cents came from. And the last one was Lake. Uh, where are you? Look at the plat which was another four cents. So that's the three stocks that are paying me that 10 cents. Um, so I was able to figure that out. So that's a good thing. Um, the other thing is I have, since I was able to get $2,376 and 71 cents out of Robinhood already, and it's already in my bank ready to go. And I plan on putting it into this account. Um, I figure I'm going to dollar cost average it a little bit. So I'm going to deposit $100 tomorrow, maybe 100 next day, 100 next day, and just kind of go through, go that way as the prices fluctuate um, to try to get more of an average on prices. Um, if I deposit all in there all at once now, I could just be overpaying if it continues to drop tomorrow and next month, or I could be underpaying, uh, uh, which would be a great thing. But, I mean, just overall, you don't really know. So that's why I'm doing dollar cost averaging. So I, I think I'm just going to deposit like $100 every day for a while to get that uh, $3,000 that I've got back into this account. And that way I kind of get an average price over it. Um, on top of my $10 a day, of course. Because I've got the $10 a day just automatic. Um, if I go to my schedules... Boom, every single day, $10 is being deposited. So, anyways, that's the deal. And uh, if anybody knows the answer to these calculations here or why this is different between the total cost and the 
net cash flow. And why the net cash flow doesn't really match the cash flow? I'm not quite sure about. That. I wonder. No, that's ten dollars and forty-six cents. It'd be a much bigger difference than twelve cents. So yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. Um, and if you do count dividends earned somehow in there, then you got eleven thirty-nine eighty-seven. So that'd bring it to eleven thirty-nine. 88 I'm still off by a penny so I don't know and like I said these are very minute amounts they're they're we're talking a penny or two here but of course we want to make sure that everything's being counted for properly and I'm you know I don't trust people just for the sake of trusting them I need to know for sure that stuff's being done properly especially when it's something automated which you know this entire broker is pretty much automated it's just software doing all the stuff um, so I mean I that's another reason why I come over here and I track these and then I can actually pull this up and see how much I actually paid so this claims that I bought this much at this uh, this amount so if I take uh, 0 0.00073 divided by 217.50, and I did that totally wrong. If I take 217.50 and divide it by 0 0.00073, all right, let me rephrase this. If I take 16 cents <laughs> divided by 217.50, nope. 217.50 divided by 16 cents. I'll get the math right yet. Um, I figured this out before, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing wrong. I'm just not thinking right now. It's been a long day. Um, let's see here. Yes, 217.50 times 0 .00073 equals my 16 cents. Or 217.50... Nope. 16 divided by 217.50. No, how do how do I figure that before? Hmm, I did figure that out before. Like I said, I'm just having a brain fart. This math was easy to me yesterday. <laughs> um, 0 0.00129 times 92.99 tells me 11.999 so 12 cents so anyways times 33.23 19 cents so I can calculate it and make sure that I'm actually getting the shares that I'm paying for which is fine I didn't really question that too much I just want to make sure it was happening again because this is all automated and I'm not a real trustworthy or a trusting person, I should say. I am trustworthy. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, long story short, that's the current status. Tomorrow, I'll have $110 more deposited, uh, the $10 automatic deposit plus the $100 deposit I've set up. And uh, we'll see what uh, responses we get. So uh, right now, these are my holdings, if anybody's curious. And I'll just sort by my biggest shares here which is pretty minute but um, Tinger Factory Outlets has good history good financials right now uh, but uh, they're a total retail outlet that specializes in like if I remember right clothes and stuff and I don't see that uh, having a long future um, everything's going online nowadays and I think there's going to be better options but for now they are a good company and so I've got them in there uh, Ford again, um, they're going nowhere really. Um, they're sticking around. I mean, they're one of the big manufacturers that've been around forever, but uh, their stock has really gone nowhere in over a decade. Uh, but they do keep keep uh, increasing that uh, dividend, so why not? AT and T again, uh, their uh, finances and stuff aren't looking that great, but they I believe they just. Uh, took over they just uh last year they um uh, what's the word i'm looking for they bought out another company they, they took another company on so they took on a bunch of extra debt there so that explains that but again another company keeps raising their dividend um 
PPL, all these I, I found in different areas. Safe is an exception. I, I have, this one's more of an opportunity one for me. Um, it's a new uh, REIT that's only been around for like a year since uh, 2017. And, um, but their financials look awesome and uh, I have high hopes for them. Um, Southern is basically the utility to invest in as far as I'm concerned. It is amazing when it comes to utility companies um, for investors. Um, floor stores in our REIT, or that's another uh, bank. I believe Old Republic's a bank. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> ah, insurance underwriting. And, all right, so it's an insurance company, I guess. Um, anyways, um, I don't have all my companies down of exactly what I own, but I have gone through them, done a little bit of research on each of them, um, a lot of research on some of them, um, and I'm pretty confident in most. Like I said, I'm pretty confident in about 90% of these. Most of them are dividend aristocrats, and uh, and others, the ones that aren't, have been paying for at least uh, seven, eight years uh, dividends and increasing their dividends during that time. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, I don't have a whole lot more to say about it. If anybody knows answers to the uh, calculation differences, especially with that net cash flow, let me know. Um, other than that, I'll let you know what they say. Uh, appreciate your time. Have a good one.